Hello and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna talk about superclasses and subclasses by using the word extend in this episode. So let's get into it. Don't forget this channel have a dedicated Discord server. It's a place where you can talk about the episodes and tutorials of this channel. Maybe you wonder something about the last episode that was a bit unclear. Or maybe you just wanna say hello. And for those who wish to go the extra mile to support the channel, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page, and also there's a membership option here on YouTube. Thank you! Today we will talk about one of the reasons that makes Java object-oriented, and that is the extend keyword, also known as inheritance, that you inherit something from another class. Simple explanation is that you have a superclass, or parent class also called, and then you have a subclass or a child class. But instead of just talking about it, let's go into our house class and uh, we can keep these methods, that doesn't really matter. But we're gonna create a new class, so right click source new class and we're gonna call this building. And this building class will be the super class for our house class. So let's drag this to the right here so we can see it easier. And our house class will extend our building class. Building. Now I spelled it correctly. All right. So this house extends building. And the house will be the child class here or the subclass. And the building class here will be the superclass or also known as parent class. One way you can think about this is that instead of saying extend, you can say that house is a building. So you replace the word extend in your head, not in the code here, with is a. So house is a building. Yeah, that makes sense. And even though everything here I'm saying doesn't really make sense, why are we using extends? What's the purpose of this? There's a lot of pieces of information or reasons that needs to come together before this, well, makes sense. So just hang in there. We're gonna get into what's the purpose of using this and the power behind it. The pieces will fall into place as we go. And one of the reasons why you use extend and having superclass and subclasses and so on is that you wanna reuse as much code as possible. You don't wanna write the same code over and over and over. So for example, in our building class, we can have variables, public int, and we can have size in square, let's see here, square meter, square meter. We can have public int, Floors, how many floors it has, public int cost in dollar, and so on. These variables are stored in the building class, but they can also be used in our house class or accessed in our house class because it's extending the building. House is a building. So the code inside our building class, now since we extend it, can be accessed in our house class. So building is our superclass and house is our subclass. So we can access these variables in the building class from our house class. But we cannot, the superclass cannot reach methods or variables in the subclass. This alone is not a reason why we should use extend. We could just store these three variables in our house class and just skip building class altogether. But what if we had more types of buildings. Right now we just have a house. What if we right click new class and we add a store. Now we have a store and I'm just gonna take that on the side here. Store extends building cause store is a building and maybe we want even more classes here. So new class apartment, apartment. And now we have house, store, and of course, apartments that extends building. Now the use case behind a superclass and a subclass becomes more apparent or there's more reasons behind it because now we only have to add code in the building class once and we can access them in our apartment, in our store, 
and in our house. So we've set the values in our house class here. Then we can set different values in our store class as well as our apartment class. And those are unique to those classes. But now it's starting to make sense to have a superclass called building and subclasses for each type of building that we have. Maybe we're making a city game and we need different type of buildings, but all of these buildings have a lot of variables or attributes or methods in common. So instead of having all of those methods added in here, and then we go to the store and we add them same here and the same here. We can now make a superclass that have methods and variables that are common in all the child classes. So now we can set these variables in each class if you want, and they will be of course unique. And of course, I'm only using integers now, but you can have objects, you can have strings, you can have doubles, anything you want. It's just another class, but this class are extended by other classes. So we declare the variable in our superclass building, but we can initialize them in our subclasses, in our house, store, and apartments. And I'm actually going to add another variable here, public, uh, public string name or not name, type of building. I think that's correct, yeah. Then in our house class in the constructor where we need to be, we can say square meter is equal 200, floors equal, not floors, oh, sorry, floors with two O's, my bad. <laughs> floors, two floors in the house and cost and cost in dollars are 200,000. Let's say it costs 200,000 and type of building is a type of building equals house, like so. And why are you, oh, because I didn't save. All right, so we could set these variables in store and apartment as well. And I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm just gonna copy in our store. We have public store. Stores are much larger, so let's say 21,000 square meter, doesn't really matter. Floors, big store, and cost, let's add two more zeros, 20 million, and type of building, and let's add store. And let's go to our apartment, public apartment, and in here, this apartment is 100 square meter, floors just one, cost not 200,000, but let's say 10,000, I don't know, and apartment, apartment. Now we have different values to our variables in building. They're different in our house, store, as well as apartment. So let's go to our first lesson class, the main class. And in the main method, we can say house house equals new house. And I think we need a color for that house since before. So we can just set red. And our store, store equals new store. No, nothing there. And apartment. App equals new apartment. Like so. So we could try and just go Sisu. Then in here we can type out the size, so house is plus oops, house dot size in square meters plus big. And if I run this now, first of all this house is red, then it says house is 200 big. And because we said 200 in our house class here, then it's going to print out that. And we can do the same for our store and our apartment. Let's just copy one these and change for store, then store, then apartment, apartment, apartment dot size big. Run it. House is 200. That is correct. Then we had store 21,000. That is also correct. And then we have 100 for our apartment. That is also correct. And all of the other variables are correct as well, but 
We don't need to print them out. I'm just showing that you can have as many as you want. This is a perfect example of coding it once in our building class and reusing it over and over as many times we want in our subclasses, house, store, and apartment. So you can think of this as the variables in our superclass, building class, is actually inside the apartment class, but we have them in our building class and all we need to do to access them is to extend the building class. And of course, this is just variables. What about methods then? Yeah, we can add a method here. Public void cost and type. This building plus type of building. Uh, I think I'm going to move it here so we can see. All right. This building, type of building, plus cost plus cost in dollar. So we should see the type of building and also the cost in dollar whenever we call this method. So let's go to our first lesson. And instead of these printouts, we go house dot cost and type and store cost and type and apartment cost and type. And now we run it. This building house cost is cost that much, the store cost that much, and apartment cost that much. So we added a method in our building class that prints out the type of building and cost in dollars. And as soon as we give them value in our subclasses, we can then just call that method and it will print out different values depending on the values we gave it in the subclasses. So this is very powerful and very useful when dealing in Java. And what is cool here is that even though one class can only extend another class, so house can only extend one class and we extend the building. So we cannot extend any more classes, but the building as a superclass and the house as a subclass is not the only way to do this. House is a subclass to building, but it can also be a superclass to a other subclass. So the hierarchy keeps going down. But before we add the new class, let's remove this printout for the color and remove color from our constructor right there. Save it. Go to our first lesson. Remove it from our house here and save it. Because then if we had it, I would need to talk about something called super and we're not there yet. So we're just going to remove it and get into it another episode. So now into our source, new class and we can call it log cabin because I think log cabin is a type of house it's not an apartment it's not a store it's a house but it's a very specific type of house so log cabin can extends house because log cabin is a house it's a type of house in my opinion at least so now we have a building here as a superclass for apartment store and house but log cabin is using house as a superclass. And there's no limit to this. You can keep going down. You can keep having subclasses to store, different types of stores, electronic store, uh, grocery store, etc., apartment, high rise, low flat rise, whatever type you have. As long as each class can only extend one class so apartment can only extend building and nothing more so those are the rules one class can only extend another class but that class itself can be extended by another class and so on and so on if we wanted to store something that's very specific for our log cabin that wouldn't really make sense to have in our building class or in our house class so this log cabin class might need to store the type of logs what type of uh, what type of tree is used to build this log cabin, for example. So public st string uh, type of logs equal uh, pine. So it's, a, it's built by using pine wood. And now if I go to our main class here, and in here we can add a log cabin, uh, log cabin equals new log cabin. And our log cabin, we can cost and type. Of course, if we want to, 
But since we set the values for cost and type here, we type of building and cost in dollars are set in our house class, those values will carry over to our log cabin because we don't change them here. So we can actually uh, call it once and just see how it looks. So log cabin, cost and type, let's bring this up, then click run, house cost for the, yeah, it's a house that costs that much. But without changing the values in the house, Let's just copy these from our house, go to our log cabin and public log cabin. We need the constructor. We need to set the values in the log constructor. So in here, cost of dollar uh, is very cheap, $2,000, let's say. And then we say log cabin. And now we're on it. Log cabin cost $2,000. All right, that's pretty cool. So even though log cabin extends house, we can still reach these variables because house extends the building. So all the variables and methods that's in our building and our house class can be used in our log cabin because log cabin extends house and then house extends building. So all of those variables and methods can be used inside our log cabin. And the general idea where you put the variables and the methods when you have the type of extend where you have superclasses and subclasses and so on, where do you put the variables? Where does it make most sense? If the children to a class needs to use them, that's a good reason to put the variables and methods in that superclass. For example, all of these variables can be used and would be used in each apartment, store, house and also the log cabin. So this is a pretty good place to put these type of variables. But if we had the variable uh, type of logs, let's take, copy this. If we put the type of logs in our building class, that wouldn't make much sense because the apartment class is not using logs. The store is not. House could be, but not all houses. So why should we have the type of logs in our building class that makes no sense so that's why we keep it in our log cabin and everything else we put them in the correct spot where it makes most sense so more general variables we put them further up the hierarchy more precise or specific variable and methods we put them further down the hierarchy so very very general at the top very specific at the bottom just a quick fyi there are different type of visibility modifiers, for example, public, private, and protected. I know that, we're gonna get to that in the next episode. But for now, to make this as simple as possible, public is the one we're going with for now. So next episode, we're gonna talk about visibility modifiers. Another thing that's good to know when you're dealing with hierarchy like this, using superclasses and subclasses, is that, for example, we had a method here, method inside house, which is inside a house class, cannot be reached by building because it's the superclass of house and it cannot also not be reached by store or apartment because they are different type of children to building. So the only classes that can use methods inside the house is subclasses to house. For example, log cabin. And if log cabin had a child, then that child can reach them. So, and so on. So yeah. The only classes that can reach that is classes that are children to this class. This is, of course, a very simple explanation of using extend. And the use case here might not be the most uh, practical. But let's use a real example from a real game that I recently made. And that's part of our platformer tutorial, the last tutorial I did before this one. And let's go in here. You don't need to have it in your uh, projects or anything. I just wanna show you examples from it. Then I'm gonna go in here. We have an entity class that is the base class for every type of object, every type of NPC and even the player. So the entity class stores position, size, the hitbox, and a lot of other different type of variables. And we have a lot of different types of methods here. But what's common in here is that all of these methods and these variables are accessed by its children. 
So entity is the superclass of them all. It's the top of the hierarchy. The most general information is stored in here. But it's also used by the enemy class. So enemy extends entity. Here we get a little bit more specific. The entity now is a enemy. So we store the type of enemy, direction for the enemy, the tile it's on, a lot of different stuff. We don't need to get into what each of them are, but very specific information for just the enemy. Then we have a player class that also extends entity. Now we're storing every information about the player here. We store the sprite animation, if we're moving, going left, right and jumping, booleans, offsets for drawing, speed for jumping, and a lot of different type of variables. But these are just for the player. They are not used by any enemy. And the enemy class itself here is actually a super class for our different type of enemies. So all enemies share these variables and all of these methods in here. So for example, we have a crabby, a crab that extends enemy. So here we use methods that's inside our enemy class. Then we have some very specific behavior for just the crab and so on. But the crabby class is a child to enemy and enemy is a child to entity and so on. And we also have a pink star, which is a, what do you call them? Starfish. And that has something very specific for starfish. And the last one is a shark. So, this is a real case for extend. So if I didn't use extend here, then I would need to write all of these variables and all of these methods, plus all of these variables and all of these methods in each crabby, pink star and shark class. And for our player, I would need to have all of these methods and variables that's inside our entity class inside our player class too. So this is a very great example of code it once and reuse it as many times as you need. So this is a perfect example of using extend. So yeah, that's pretty much how extend works in Java. And to summarize, a class can only extend one class, but a subclass to a already superclass can be its own superclass to other subclasses. It's like a family tree, but instead of two parents, you only have one parent that can give birth to as many uh, children as it wants, and each child can give birth to as many children as they want, and so on. There are, of course, more advanced stuff that I didn't cover, but I want to cover the basics, and then later when you're coding, you're starting to get a hang of it. You can add more advanced stuff with more functionality, but this is like the most basic version of using Extend. The next episode, as I mentioned, will be about the visibility modifiers. And we're going to keep the code we have right now. We're going to talk about private, public, and protected. And what's the difference between those when dealing with uh, subclasses and superclasses. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned something. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next episode as well. Take care now. Bye.